Hi, this is Tim Layton, and I'm at the studio. Uh, I've got the Jobo running right now. Uh, in this particular run, I'm doing uh, some triax, and that is um, developed at 68 Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. So um, I've double checked my temperature. I've got my trusty Kodak thermometer, and I am right on the money at 68. Uh, I've got everything set up here. So here's my developer. I'm using D76 stock stop bath fixer and then in these containers we've got uh, water. Uh, I will just mention that I do a pre-wash. I've got the the drum rolling right now. I'm using a 2523 drum with a 2509 uh, holder so I've got six sheets of 4x5 in there. Um, I took the cap off so I could pour this in with one hand while I'm holding my iPhone recording this but um, I use distilled water my first wash. Uh, you don't. Some, some say you don't have to, but I prefer to do it, and I certainly do that with developer. That way, no matter where I develop. So the way this works is uh, I pour the chemicals in here. This is the lift where we'll drain, and then the drain will come out here. Uh, actually, in this first one, I'll move this. So we'll start the um, wash process now. So I'll go ahead and grab this, and I use uh, about 250 milliliter of uh, chemical per uh, uh, for this drum and this setup so I'll just take and eyeball about half of this just simply pour this in there that's going down in the drum and that's about half Alright, so I'll put this back in to maintain the temperature, and uh, there we have that. You'll see here um, on the uh, processor we've got 20 degrees centigrade, and I've got it set to rotation, which is uh, number one, and then this is just the on and off. This is in German here. So I will um, come back on the next step, where I'm going to let this go uh, for two minutes and then we'll uh, we'll dump that out and then we'll start with the developer okay we're back uh, at the end of the wash cycle um, the initial uh, pre-wash uh, I pre-wash my triax I don't uh, with delta films but uh, that's per the manufacturer guidelines I've heard of some people doing it I just I just don't do it not with t-grain films um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this handle here I'll lift this this will lift the drum up and then it will drain out of this hose here. Then we'll come over and grab our D76. We'll pour it into uh, into here. And then um, I actually run this with this configuration underneath these conditions at uh, seven minutes. So I'll go ahead and lift the drum up, and you can see that. I'm trying to hand hold this so you can see it. see all that from the anti-halation layer that washed off. Alright, so we'll re-engage this now. So it's re-engaged and we'll take our developer, which I've got here. And we'll pour it in. That's one of the things that's so beautiful about this Jobo system is the ease of this. And I'll start my timer. All right, so uh, that'll take you through to the next step. Now what we'll do is uh, we'll go with the stop bath next for uh, 30 seconds. And then we'll go to the fixer uh, for five minutes. And then we'll uh, do a rinse where I'll uh, actually... Uh, fill and empty the tank three times and then um, I do a hypo clearing agent uh, for my uh, black and white film and I do that for four minutes and then I'll do a final wash uh, for ten minutes and then I'll use a tray for a photo flow uh, and then hang it to dry so alright we'll be back on the stop bath okay we're back we got about twenty seconds left uh, I'll mention I do all of my uh, developers as one shot on black and white 
So when that gets down to about five seconds, I'll go ahead and put the lift up. And we'll empty that out. And so the time would be right on the money. You'll hear, hear the timer going off. All right, we'll let that drain. We'll put this back in. And I'm going to dial in just a minute. Here you'll see that uh, this stop bath. All right, and that's only 30 seconds, so um, I can probably just chat for a, a moment while we're doing that. Um, <clears throat> so I'd mentioned on my black and white developers, I do those uh, one shot. Um, I'd recommend doing the same, whether you're doing it by hand or, or otherwise. Um, this uh, stop bath is only uh, 30 seconds, at least in my process. That's what I do. So we'll empty that, and then we'll go to the fixer. Um, and I use uh, a process that only takes about five minutes uh, to do that, because so, it's a rapid fixer. So, All right, we're at 30 seconds, so we're going to empty this. Now this time, I reuse my stop bath. So we'll put that in this container. Go back in there. Okay. And then now you heard the timer going off. <clears throat> we'll get our fixer. And we're gonna do this process for five minutes. And we'll go ahead and start that and let that go. Now what I'm going to do in the meantime is uh, I'll put this stop bath back. I do uh, have a shelf life of about one month on that. And the fixer just base is based on your clearing time, but I found with my process based off of my routine and that I can get uh, three or four weeks out of uh, fixer and I'll mix up a gallon of that at a time. So I'm going to get those chemicals ready and replenished back where they need to go, and then we'll come back. Uh, we're down to the last uh, 20 seconds or so of the fixer. So uh, we'll dump that uh, back into our uh, container here so we can reuse that. And then I've got the hypo-clearing agent. I'm, I actually use Kodak. I mix it up one gallon stock, and then I dilute it one plus four uh, for production run. Okay, we're at the end of our process there and like I said I do that for four minutes so we'll go ahead and uh, dump this out here all right now we're gonna rinse um, I think I had mentioned the hypoclear, but the rinse is actually next. So I'll go ahead and put that in. Uh, do that for two minutes. And in the meantime, what I do is I go ahead and replenish this water and uh, get it back into the system so it can be regulated so we'll come back after that and then we will do the hypo clearing agent so okay we're at the end of this uh, two minute cycle almost um, I uh, will go ahead and dump that here as soon as this timer goes off and this stage isn't you know critical in the timing I'll go ahead and leave that set for two minutes we'll go ahead and dump this you'll see this come out And we'll go ahead and get our next water that's uh, at the right temperature. We'll put about half of this in. Uh, a little bit more. And we'll hit that for two minutes. And I'll go ahead and put this back in the processor so we can maintain that temperature. At this stage, um, that temperature isn't hypercritical like it is with E6, but um, 
you've got the machine, you might as well use it to your advantage. So we'll do this for two minutes, and then we'll get over to the HypoClear for four minutes. Okay, we're at the end of this two minutes, so we'll go ahead and lift this and get this out. All right, we're in good shape. Go ahead and re-engage this. And uh, we've got our HypoClear. I think I mentioned this, but uh, I use the Kodak HypoClear. I mix it at stock at one gallon, and then mix it at one plus four for a uh, production run. So we've got that. We'll let that go for four minutes. We'll start our timer. And uh, really all we've got to do after that is do a 10-minute wash. I will mention that um, with the Jobo, uh, one of the things you can do is uh, you fill it, at the tank, uh, you know, with fresh water, and then you leave it go uh, for 30 seconds or a minute. And you do that, you know, five or six times in that cycle. That's uh, that's fine too. So uh, when I do it by hand, um, I just let running water out of the tap, you know, run through and cleanse that. Cleanse the uh, film probably does really a, a better job because it keeps uh, fresh water moving throughout. So either way, that's what it is, and uh, the results should be good. I will uh, see you in the next step uh, when we go to the final wash. Okay, we're at the end of the process for our HypoClear, which just completed four minutes. <clears throat> I'll mention this just so you have a couple options. Um, I alluded to this earlier. Um, for washing, um, you can uh, take a couple different approaches. I like simplicity, so uh, you can if you want to, you know, fill and dump you know, using the system, uh, you know, about six or seven times at 30 second or one minute intervals, you can certainly do that. Uh, that's a good method for water conservation. Uh, you're looking at about 250 milliliters of um, water each shot to do that. Um, if uh, that's not a concern or you're in an environment where it makes sense to go ahead and uh, take the, the drum out um, and then you can pop the top, which I'll do and then just set it into your uh, darkroom sink and let it uh, run uh, clear water out of the tap for 10 minutes. So if I'm in an environment where I can do that, I think that's the, the, probably the most uh, efficient method. So I'll go ahead and dump uh, this right now for the hypo clearing agent. All right, so on the Next method, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, and remove the drum off the processor, pop the top, and uh, we'll get the water running. Okay, we're at the end of our 10 minutes. I um, just wanted to show you something and kind of mention something as well. Um, you'll see the films. You can see there's three on that side, three on the other side. I actually uh, had some width exposures and some blank films. Um, so I'll just mention that if you are a traditional analog photographer, when you run a process like this, you'll want to develop some blank films to establish your standard contact printing time. Um, and uh, so you would take a fresh film and place it in uh, through your development process. And then uh, if you had something uh, as fancy as a densitometer, you could determine your film base plus fog and speed times and your EI times and things like that but uh, for practical purposes uh, if you want to you know test your development process you develop that blank sheet of film take it into the dark room and then you uh, print uh, in steps across the film maybe two or three second increments to where you find Dmax and uh, that would uh, be your standard contact printing time. So in the future, when you develop negatives, you would set your larger exactly how you had it set. Let's just say it was F11 at 14 seconds or something. And <clears throat> you can get an idea if you've over or underdeveloped, over or underexposed, etc., etc. And it's a way to establish times for um, your uh, proofs and stuff in the darkroom too, it's for contact sheets. So. Anyway, um, i got to use two hands now, so I'll uh, start pulling these out, and I'll come back to you and show you the one of the sheets in the photo flow, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, I just grabbed one of the exposures out of it here, and we'll take it over here, and we'll put it in our photo flow, 
Uh, the way that I do it is I know from the orientation of the notch in the film that the emulsion side is up. I put that up. I don't want that scraping on the bottom. So I slide it in this way. And then um, I just sort of lightly agitate it for about a minute and then uh, and I hang it to dry up here above and then uh, we're done. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, I will um, make another video on doing E6. Uh, well, there's a couple different kits out. Uh, this video was produced in March of 2013. So um, at least in the U.S. Uh, we've got Freestyle, which uh, sells the um, Arista kits for E6, and then also um, the Tetanol kits. I think in the U.K. and around there, um, you can probably get the Fuji Hunt uh, kits as well. And there, you might be able to do it in the U.S. I'm, I'm not sure, but I usually just typically use Tetanol uh, for production work and Arista for uh, personal stuff if I want to try and save on some money. But Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you can reach me on my blog at blackandwhitefineart.net, and it's the same on facebook.com, uh, blackandwhitefineart. So I will uh, talk to you soon.